All right, it's time to have a look at some separate chaining source code for the hash table. So here I am on my GitHub repository, williamfz.data-structures, and you can find the source code here under the hash table folder. Now I have multiple implementations of the hash table. Um, today we're gonna to be looking at the hash table with separate chaining, and in the later videos, probably one of uh, these three, I haven't figured out which one yet. So let's dive into the code. I have it here on um, my computer. So let's get going. All right. So first things first, I have two classes. One of them called entry, the other one just separate uh, chaining hash table. So let's have a look at the entry class first. And these entries represent individual items or key value pairs you would want to be inserting into the hash table. So in Java we have generics, so a generic uh, key which has to be hashable and some value. So when I create an entry I give it the key value pairs and I also compute the hash code. So there's a built-in method in Java to compute the hash code for a particular object and you can override it to specify the hash code for your particular object, which is really convenient. So compute the hash code and cache it. You absolutely want to cache it so you don't have to recompute this thing uh, multiple times. It should be cheap to compute, but for something like a string, uh, the hash code can take linear time to compute, which is not good. So here I have an equals method. Um, which doesn't override the object equals method because I don't want to have to do any casting. First it checks if the hashes are not equal. If the hashes are not equal, we know from the first video that they are absolutely not equal so we can return false. Otherwise I compare the keys to each other. And that's about it for the entry class. Very, very simple, very basic. Now let's get into the meat of the thing. So the hash table itself. Okay. So my default hash table capacity is going to be 3, so it holds three, uh, 3 items. And the load factor by default, if the user doesn't specify one, is going to be uh, 0.75. So that's the maximum capacity I'm willing to tolerate. Then I have a few important instance variables we need to go over. So the maximum load factor, so once the load factor goes above this uh, value, then I resize the table. So this is the capacity, so the actual uh, maximum number of items that could, or how big the table size is rather. So the threshold, so this is computed uh, to be the capacity times the max load factor. So it tells us, hey, you're above the threshold to resize, it's time to resize. Uh, size is how many items are currently in the table. And this is the table itself. So it's an array of linked lists which themselves have entries. Pretty simple. So there's a few constructors. So you can construct a hash table just using the default settings um, with an initial capacity or with a capacity and a max load factor. So this is a designated constructor. Let's have a look. So just save what the max load factor is compute the default capacity and make sure you take the max of say the default capacity and the capacity just so that I don't know you don't want the capacity to be too low uh, there might be weird things happening if the capacity is set to one or something like that then calculate the threshold and then finally initialize the table pretty simple okay let's have a look at all these methods right here so size returns the number of elements inside the hash table empty. Is the hash table empty? Okay. So this is the first really interesting method. It's called normalize index. And it's used when you want to convert a hash value into an index. And it says in the comments here, essentially this strips the negative sign and places the hash value in the domain zero to capacity. Because uh, hash values are integers, they could be anywhere in the domain of an integer, which is about uh, minus 32 uh, to the 31, sorry, to positive to the 31, around that. So what this does is a mask 
it strips off the negative sign from the hash value and then mod it by the capacity. So bring it into this domain so we can actually use it as a lookup index. Next up is clear, so we just want to clear everything out of the table. That's straightforward. Contains key and has key are the same thing. So what we're going to do is we compute, given a key, so we want to find out does this key exist within the hash table. All right. So what we're going to do is compute the key's uh, hash, normalize it, and then that will give us the bucket index. So which bucket should this key appear should it be in the hash table. Now I'm just going to seek to see if I'm going to seek to find the entry. And if the entry is not equal to null, then it exists. If it's equal to null, it doesn't exist. Simple. Okay. Put, add, and insert are all uh, common names for just putting something into the hash table or updating a value inside the hash table too. So we don't want to allow null keys. That's something we absolutely don't want. Uh, so just throw an exception there. Otherwise, we're going to create a new entry, find the bucket it belongs to, and then insert it using this uh, method we'll get to. OK, get. So given a key, I want to find the value associated with that key. Again, don't allow null keys. And this is going to be pretty routine all the time. We're always going to want to find which bucket this particular key belongs to. So get the bucket index. Okay, find the entry. Assuming it's not null, then this is the entry we want and return its value. If it is null, well, the key doesn't exist, so return null. Okay, suppose we want to remove a key now from the hash table. So key is not null, find the bucket index, and we're going to call it this private remove entry method, which is just down here. So given the bucket index, so which, which bucket does this key belong to, what we're going to do is we're going to seek for the entry inside the linked list structure. And if the entry is not null, then we're going to extract the actual linked list and uh, remove it. So this is a built-in data type in Java. So, so just remove it from that linked list data structure, uh, decrement the size, and return the entry value. That's all we have to do. Otherwise, it's well not there, so return null. So insert a uh, bucket insert entry. So given a particular bucket, we want to place uh, this entry inside of it. Okay. So first, we're, since we know the bucket index, we can go in our table and automatically get the linked list structure, which I call bucket. So if bucket is null, well, we have to create a, uh, a new linked list. So we're essentially lazily allocating these linked list data structures, which is good because we don't want to use more memory than we need to. So next up, I find the entry that already exists. So this is in case we want to do an update, for instance. So if the existent entry is null, this means that we need to add a new entry to the end of the linked list. So add it to the end of the linked list, increment the size, and check if we're above the threshold, and if so, resize the table and yeah use null to indicate that there was no previous entry otherwise we need to update that entry so then just update the value in the existing entry and return the value all right so seek entry this is a method we've been using pretty much everywhere and it finds the returns uh, the particular entry uh, at a given bucket index if it exists otherwise just return null they probably know what's going on by now, so extract the linked list at the particular bucket index. Otherwise, return null if it doesn't exist yet. Otherwise, seek through each of the entries in the linked list and compare the keys to the key we're after. And if it, there's a match, return that entry, otherwise return null. Okay, here's the last 
a really complicated method called a resize table. So this resizes the initial table, doubling the capacity of uh, the table. So first we double the capacity. We recompute the new threshold because now we have a higher threshold because we've increased the capacity. Now create a new table with this new capacity. So this new table is bigger than the current table. Then go through the current table, look for linked list data structures which are not null. If you find one, we'll loop through all its entries, calculate the bucket index, uh, find the bucket and essentially insert it into this new table. And after that, uh, completely remove the old uh, data that was in the old table. And at the end, set the table to be equal to the new table. Okay. And then these last two methods are just return all the keys and all the values within the hash table. Uh, fairly simple. And then these last two methods are uh, iterators and toString, which we don't need to go over. So that's essentially uh, separate chaining in a nutshell. Uh, fairly simple to implement with a linked list, uh, much more difficult to implement with, uh, say, a balanced binary tree or something like that. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave me a comment. Awesome. See you later.